please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Disha of Motila Loswal Private Wealth is also with us. Uh, Sandeep, uh, good afternoon. Uh, seeing a, you know, some bit of accidents today in the broader market, strides for one, SRF the other. Uh, your thoughts on uh, the, the kind of action we have seen in the mid-caps? Well, obviously, there is uh, a lot of punishment which is being given to companies that don't report uh, good, strong earnings as well as companies that disappoint on earnings. Uh, this is also a bit of a reversion to mean happening. Last year, last calendar year was a great year, of, an outstanding year for mid-caps. There were huge inflows which were happening into mid-cap funds as well. Uh, this year, there's, of, of course, been a ra rationalization of funds. Um, I think that there has been some selling which has happened because of this rationalization in mid-caps, because of which we've seen some wanton selling. And so what has happened is that uh, when companies report good numbers, and given the rationalization that's happened, there, hasn't, there haven't been enough people who've been there on the other side to take a longer-term view of companies. And therefore, we've seen that you know, a lot of stocks face significant selling pressure. Sandeep, good afternoon. Good to have you on the show. Uh, I want to talk about the event, I mean, as Anuj referred to it, the event that kind of made this market top out, at least in the short term, if you think that is really a top. So at about uh, 10,900, has the current rally run its course? Uh, you know, what next, really, now that Karnataka is behind us? Yeah, well, uh, just to put things in perspective, you know, um, in early, in, in December, uh, on one of your earlier morning shows, I had meant, given a target of 10,800 to 11,000 for the Nifty. And after we hit 10,800, though the Nifty kept getting higher, mid-caps kept, mid-caps and the broad market kept correcting. And uh, actually, I saw a 10% correction was quite likely, which actually happened post that. Now, we've seen a pullback closer to about 10,900, and it's, it's been a bit of buy on rumors, sell on news with the BJP actually winning, uh, well, being the single largest party in Karnataka. Um, but I think the, the, the message, one of the things that the market didn't like was the fact that their vote share has actually decreased slightly. So, they've, so in that sense, they're not really better off than they were in the previous elections, though, though through better political management, uh, they've actually managed to get far more seats. Um, I think that um, given the sell-off that's been, or the selling that's been happening in mid-caps, the fact that you know, crude has been on a boil, I had actually mentioned in the December show as well that I was comfortable as long as crude doesn't go above $80, and we've, we've pretty much got above $80, and I think if the, if the oil sustains here, then that's obviously negative news for the markets because it will actually impact earnings, it will impact inflation, it will impact the current account deficit, it will impact interest rates, so all of that. So from that perspective, um, if you were to look at markets, um, I think on the other hand, earnings momentum, I think, is, is clearly picking up. If you look at the first 20 nifty companies which reported earnings, we saw a top line of about 19%, EBITDA growth of about 14%. Um, and if you look at the broader market, you know, our Motilal Oswal coverage, uh, right. uh, almost two-thirds of them, uh, of course, it was the earlier part of the season, reported results in line or better. So from that perspective, uh, given these strong earnings trajectory, while we could see this correction continue a little longer, uh, I, I'm inclined to you know, want to buy the dips. And I think that we could still see a new high for this, for this calendar year, uh, though uh, politics, is, politics and crude will continue to weigh it down. Uh, but this is a market, uh, since the long-term bull market is in place, you should be looking to buy the dip mm. or you should be looking to you know, stagger in your purchases. A lot of uh, stocks trying to battle the down move. Asian Paints has seen some buying. Interesting. It's in the green. Uh, there is a lot of buying on Hindalco after the drubbing. The stock got post numbers. Now there's some semblance of, uh, you know, an excitement that's kind of building up. So you can see Hindalco surging as well. And, of course, no stopping the Bajaj Twins. We won't get tired of saying it, no, because of the way these stocks have moved. Bajaj Finserve is now clocking gains of almost 4%. Sandeep, that actually brings me to the NBFC side of the market because in this result season, if there's one universe that has almost uniformly delivered great numbers, it's got to be NBFCs. You know, housing finance companies, consumer finance companies, even some of the insurance companies. Uh, how are you di dissecting NBFCs and what would you pick? Uh, well, continue to remain uh, bullish on the NBFCs. And I think, you know, 
the message from this uh, result season, even on the NBFC side, uh, remains that quality delivers. There were significant concerns that given the way bond yields have risen, given the fact that a lot of the NBFCs, you know, uh, do have to resort to wholesale funding, the fact that they don't have low-cost CASA. Uh, the fear was that they will not, earnings will not uh, be supportive and they will actually disappoint. But given the strong distribution and franchise that some of these companies have built, uh, given the fact that they have, they do tend to be able to access customers which banks are not, given the fact that they are far more flexible, I think companies which have a very strong, robust uh, risk management platform as well as a strong growth engine, including some of the companies that you mentioned, um, um, uh, will continue to deliver. And I don't see why they will not, you know, these remain secular growth stories in India. You know, credit remains in India significantly underpenetrated. And uh, I think that you will see, continue to see growth from the stronger companies or the companies, the larger ones or the ones who are actually leaders in their space. Uh, for the next three to five years. So you should be, you should continue to stay invested in the sector, be with the best companies here, be with the leaders, uh, including leaders in the smaller spaces or the niches, and, uh, you know, buy all dips there. On a couple of, uh, you know, basic market moves, uh, uh, what have you made of uh, the bit of move in IT from the lows and pharma continuously making new lows? Today, as we speak, strides is down 22%. Well, uh, you know, given the fact that globally growth is 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 is, is strong, uh, the fact that uh, the Makka for IT companies US also shows strong growth, it's not surprising that uh, you know a lot of the IT companies have bounced back very sharply. Uh, also, the rupee depreciation, of course, always helps. But I think the noteworthy point here has been that a lot of the mid-sized IT companies, where there were fears. A lot of analysts were had almost written off a lot of these companies. They, they went back to their shells. They've been actually working hard over the last three to five years, re-engineering themselves, refocusing on different niches, different verticals, uh, focusing on cloud, on, um, uh, on digital. And a lot of them seem to have got their act in place. And uh, I think that is the bigger message, you know, compared to the larger companies where a few of them have done well and a few of them have done averagely. The real story has been really mid-cap IT. And I think the, it, it's really heartening to see that there are a lot of mid-cap IT companies which even if they never become seriously large, will remain good, strong investment candidates and will continue to grow uh, at a reasonable pace uh, over the medium to longer term. Well, on pharma, I, you know, the the double-edged sword of uh, uh, falling generic prices in the U.S. because of uh, uh, consolidation of buyers, which has been leading to continuous and almost steady, almost non-stop erosion in generic prices over the last couple of years, along with the FDA inspections, plus the fact that, uh, uh, while it may sound paradoxical, the FDA, U.S. FDA, has also quickened the pace of generic approval. So on the one hand, you have companies whose plants are non-functional. On the other hand, you have, uh, you know, a lot more competition in the drugs that are being sold on the market. And I think it's really a function of that. Of course, there have been companies who have, uh, uh, you know, tried a different business model who've been actually, have, may have been selling off their assets and uh, where it made sense or actually restructuring their businesses, where the, com where the market hasn't really perhaps either understood that or has actually taken that negatively. So you might have had isolated cases like that. But I think the real problem remains that. And until we see that generic prices in the US really start stabilizing, or we find that a lot of players decide that it's just not economical, and I use, I mean, that sounds strange, but the most profitable market for uh, uh, generic companies globally, that that market is no longer profitable to sell into, Unless that happens, and, and you know, we start seeing supply reducing there, mm. till such point of time, you know, farmer will continue to be under the weather.